Francois led HP's European and then worldwide marketing for the HP graphics solution business. And that includes all of the HP digital print brands that you know, from Indigo to Cytex. Uh, and he was instrumental in introducing Latex and PageWide to the market, two of print's most disruptive technologies. So it's entirely appropriate that Francois is going to address digital disruption, a roadmap for print into the future today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for our first keynote speaker, Francois Martin. So thank you, James. And good to be here in, uh, in the Midlands. So good afternoon to, to all of you. So as uh, James said, I mean, I started in printing when I was uh, very, very small. My parents, they had a news stand and office supplies uh, and bookstore. So I was being surrounded by paper all my life. And then I started to work on digital printing for office printing. And then 12 years ago, I came with the first HP Indigo 5000, what I call the first robust digital printer. And then the last 12 years, I have seen the growth of digital. And today I would like to, to do a presentation in, in two parts. What we know, what we should all agree on, and then what we should look at to make sure that digital uh, has a sustainable and profitable future. Um, and then at the end of my presentation, feel free to ask all kinds of uh, questions. So before we, we start, uh, when I start 12 years ago, I, I engage with very few influencers, and uh, one of them uh, was from the UK, and because we are today in the UK, uh, I would like to dedicate my presentation uh, to uh, Sophie Matthews Paul. She was one of the very first one I met. She gave me a lot of advices. She spent quality time with myself. Today, she's not attending Apex because she's very sick. Uh, we are all missing her, and I would like really to say thank you for all what she did for me and all what she did for the industry. And she was, if you don't know her, she was also a fantastic photographer. So thank you, uh, Sophie. So now, what did happen in the printing industry? What are the facts? And then the second part of my presentation will be more recommendations. And then James asked me to make some predictions. So I have three predictions. It is worth uh, one pound, but I will make them. I stick to what has, I have been told to, to say. So before we start, and this is, it has been mentioned a little bit this morning, we need to see printing like a coin with two sides. On the left you have, uh, for printers, print, it is about putting ink on a substrate in an accurate and repeatable way. This is what printers do all the time and they do it very well. But print for brands, this is communication. They don't really care how it's done. They just want to sell more of what they sell, or to sell it more expensive. So this is very important to keep that in mind, because this is really driving the evolution of the printing industry. And the one driving the evolution of the printing industry, we all believe they are here, but in fact, they are the brands. And let me show you why. The brands, they are here and they buy print. They are the only one to really put money on the table and they buy print to grow their business. Um, if they could not buy print, they will. But for most of them, print is very effective, specifically in packaging. The print service providers, the converters, the ones that are attending Apex today, for most of them, the majority, Print, they just do what brands are asking them to do. Some of them are doing some consultancy, and this is good, but most of them, they just take orders. Agencies, advertising agencies, creative designers, they are the ones also doing what their clients are asking them. Can you think about a new advertising campaign? Can you create a new packaging? Can you create a direct mail that will have a very good response rate? And then they are thinking on what to do. But they are not really making the final decisions. And then, I worked for HP, but it could be all the companies in the printing industry, the manufacturers, they are inventing new technologies to help the printers do faster and better what they have to do. But they are mainly looking at technology. 
So that's the landscape that we know, and we need to agree on the operating model because it has big consequences for the, the, for the future. So now if we look at the industry, print, it's not a monolithic one single segment. If you simplify what the printing market is about, you have industrial printing on 3D, large format printing, packaging, and commercial printing. So if we summarize quickly what's happening, I have been looking at it very carefully the last 12 years. Okay, it could be 25, but I did it 12, when digital was on the raise. So industrial printing, this is emerging. And this is a lot of promises, specifically with 3D printing. But this is something to come. It will materialize in the five to 10 years to come, not, not that short term. But this is extremely interesting, and it will take us in areas that we are not even expecting today. If we look now at large format printing, large format printing is a very mature market. It became digital already years ago. It's very mature and it is moving big time to decoration. So if some of you are in large format, your future will take you into decoration. All kind of decoration, retail, customer experience, and so on. But that business, um, you will learn a little bit from the presentation on the few things you should be doing. Because you still have areas to improve your business if you're in large format. If you're in packaging, the situation is uh, extremely interesting because the entire market is growing, packaging is printed, and it's not going to disappear. You will not get your cornflakes by a drone on your, on your table in the morning. That will not happen. So what is happening in packaging, it is moving to digital. Today, digital penetration in packaging is extremely low, but it's going to accelerate big time in the coming two, three years. And when I say accelerate, it will be a very fast acceleration. And then commercial printing. This is probably the majority of the ones visiting IPEX. So commercial printing, the, the transition analog to digital is already behind a little bit. Uh, things are settling down. The market is further consolidating. The amount of pages went down dramatically. Now it's, uh, it's much better. It's flattening. And it's all about automation. And then you will see the recommendation I'm doing after. So that's the global trends, and it's not something we should debate forever. We need Neo to understand, okay, knowing that, if I am in the printing business, what do I do? So first of all, some years ago, I remember five, six years ago, all of us, I mean, not all of us, but we were very much scared, oh, printing is going to disappear. Printing will die. A lot of people, it was presented this morning, there was a great presentation about that. But this is a few things I found. If you know that website, two sites, it's a very interesting website. And you see things like we are in the UK, 72% of the people reading books say it's much better when it is printed than when it is uh, on a Kindle. Absolutely correct. 78% don't pay attention to online ads. So don't worry, print, it will not disappear. It is like radio. When TV came, everyone said, oh, radio is dead. Come on, radio is extremely popular. And TV has not replaced radio. When internet came, people said, TV is dead. Come on, TV is extremely healthy. So things don't disappear. Sometimes they do, but most of the time it is piling up. And print has a great future if you do it right. And the best friend of print, it has been Mr. Benny Landa in 1993, when he said a very famous sentence, everything that becomes digital will become digital, and print is not an exception. So digital printing is giving a bright future to print overall. And this is why today the discussion should, should be really digital printing and my business model. So if you look at the offering, I, I make it fairly short so that you can uh, have time for questions, but also we will look at more of the recommendations. If you look today at the offering coming, it's not all available, but it is coming. 
all the big players, they have digital offering. Heidelberg, KBA, Landa, Indigo, I just took four because it was easier to make the slide. But the point is, it's like for the automotive industry. If you are hesitating when you want to buy a new car, if you are not renting it and you want to buy it, if you want to buy a Volvo, Audi, Mercedes, BMW, whatever you will buy, it's a good car, don't worry. But it will not make you necessarily a good driver. So the question is, what are you going to do with the equipment you buy? So over here, you could change the logos, you could rotate the names, they all look more or less the same, and they are going to do a very good job. But it takes more than the press to be successful. So what is written in the orange, a square, is important. It takes more than a press to be successful. And the net-net, it is that it is no longer about printing technology. And uh, you have seen the evolution of trade shows over the years. Uh, IPEX has changed in its nature. The amount of trade shows globally, worldwide, is, is declining. They are changing the way they, they organize themselves. Because technology is somewhat a little bit uh, behind us. The technologies are not really the issues. So now I'm going to enter into the second part of my presentation. This is pretty much what took place over the last, uh, let's say, 10, 15 years, the so-called digital transformation within the printing industry. So for the printers, what's next? So the, the challenge, it is not really to, to sell printed pages, labels, or boxes. This is really to connect brands to people. This is what all the ones putting money on the table want to do. Even if you are a small bakery in the village, uh, if you are uh, doing some all kind of products in, uh, in the Midlands, you're not a global player like Nestle, uh, Pepsi, and um, all the PMG and L'Oreal. You're not the big, big brands. You are small brands. But what you want is your product to be sold. And if print is helping you to do it, you will invest in printing. And if you look at other industries, this is what I do a lot, you need to look at the printing industry, because you are in it, but you need to look at other industries, how it's evolving. Like today, if you talk to Mercedes-Benz, I know them quite well, because I lived in Germany and Stuttgart for many years. So Mercedes-Benz today, their challenge, it is not really to sell cars, but to move people. And if you, if you know the application Get Taxi, there, are, there is a lot of applications on your phone to be ordering taxis. Mercedes is the one investing financially in such applications. Because they want people to move with a taxi, and then they will sell the car to the taxi driver. So this is really happening in the automotive industry. For trucks, I worked some years in Michelin, the tire company, and it's not about selling trucks anymore, it's moving goods. So, when, so for, for the printing industry, this is the same challenge. It is really to understand with their clients what has to be done. And then the clients, they can be small, they can be big. What do they want? Everything is written on one page. All the brands I have been talking to in the, the last, let's say, 10 years, I talk to a lot, a lot of companies, small, big, medium, from all over the world. They want faster time to market when they are launching a new product. They want that product to be on the shelf faster. They want definitely to engage with customers in a new way. Sometimes online is cool, but sometimes it's not. So whatever you will help them to do, they will do, they want to do it. They want to reduce complexity and they want to save cost. This is true all the time. That would have been true 50 years ago and it will be true in 50 years, probably. No one is willing to pay more for, for less. And then finally, they want to keep themselves safe from a regu regu uh, regulation standpoint. And this is very important in packaging. So this is what brands want to do. And then if the printers are capable of doing that, you are going to be in business for a very long time. So, 
However, what is new now, it is that the digital revolution that everyone is discussing, and that sentence is very important. If you want to, you need to read it carefully, and I will read it for you. The digital revolution is forcing every company to move from business models focused on products and services to new models leveraging networks and platforms. And if you take one minute and you are thinking, okay, for the printing industry, I don't understand yet what he means, but he will tell me. But for other industries, you, you can see that already. When you look at retail chains, so they have a platform and they have all kind of copy-paste, uh, same type of shops. Um, if you have applications on your mobile phone to do uh, carpool sharing, like BlaBlaCar in France, very popular, uh, millions of users, it's a platform on the phone. Then Amazon is a fantastic platform, it has been extremely successful. So when you start looking at other industries, then you say, oh yeah, what does it mean for the printing industry? So before we jump to the printing industry, let's look at what's happening in the, in the, the transportation industry. When you are driving on the motorway, on the left or on the right, it doesn't matter, um, you see a lot of trucks. And how is the truck industry organized? Simple way. Huh? I worked at Michelin, I checked again a few weeks ago, it has not changed much. Small and big companies. On the left, logistic, everything is logistic. On the right is the, the fleets, the so-called truck fleets. You have the big trucks, fleets, 1,000 trucks, 500 trucks, 100 trucks. And logistic, this is monster companies. They are the one extremely good in moving goods all over the world. From Singapore to London, from London to Edinburgh, and uh, they, they are the one moving goods all over the world, and they have contact with the big clients. Some of them have fleets, but they don't have to. And then these guys here, they are getting orders, move the goods from A to B, from the logistical guys. So, business-wise, how is it distributed? And this is very interesting. 25% all over the place. The small fleets that are just in the Midlands, they make 25%. The bigger fleets, they will be covering, let's say, all the UK, 25%. The very, very big fleets going outside of the UK, 25%. And the one just doing logistic, on the you pay for intelligence, you don't pay for moving goods. The moving goods is here. Here you pay for the intelligence, it's also 25% of the revenues. Some companies here can be combined, the very, very big ones. But this is the, um, a very established market. And I can tell you that the printing industry is going to follow pretty much the same. Now let me, let me explain you what I have in mind. If you are in the printing industry, you need to do five things, only five, like the five fingers. The first one is you need to work with your clients, big or small. Because I'm not only talking about the big, big giants like the Nestle and the Pepsi and all these guys. I'm also talking about the shops around the corner that you are dealing with on the day to day the SMBs, as we say in English, small and medium-sized companies. So you need to work with them to understand what they want to do. And you should not be only taking orders, stupidly. You need to really talk to them and ask them, hey guys, why do you do that? Why have you not thought about doing this, and so on. And you need to help them in designing their products the right way. And when I say products, it doesn't have to be a box, it can be a direct mail, it can be a brochure, it can be a catalog. So if they come to you and they say, I want a 50 pages catalog, can you do it for me? Of course you can say, yes, I can do it. And you can give your better price, your best price. Maybe someone will make it even cheaper. No, you can tell them, okay, why do you do a 50 pages catalog? And how many do you need? Do you need 1,000 copies? Oh yes, thousand, but why thousand? Maybe you make only 500 and then you do a reprint. 
or maybe you don't need 50 pages of 1,000 catalogs, but you need only 20 pages in bigger quantities, and then sometimes you will need 50 pages. So you need to, to discuss with your clients when you are taking orders. That's really, really important. The second thing you need to do, and you need to, to understand data management. Because the documents today, they, they are going to have viable data printing, personalization, versioning, limited edition, and so on. So you need to be able to understand all the technology embedded into a document. And here you need special people. It's not someone that is changing plates on an offset press that can do that. You need IT skills, and these IT skills, you need to have them in your house. Third, you need to be very good at printing. Most of the printers, you are good at that, because you have been doing that for the last 50 years. So printing operation, you start a job, you print it, you finish it, you put the glue, you put the right substrate, you pack it. That, that is what we call operational excellence. Then you need logistic. Logistic is not only the printing part in the middle that I was just mentioning. This is not logistic, this is print operation. Logistic is the entire workflow from taking orders on the phone, on the web, face to face, whatever, you take orders, and then you ship the invoice, and then you are paid. You are paid on time. Otherwise, we'll have a big cash flow issue. So, the entire workflow from order taking to invoice payment, that has to be also extremely well managed. And then the last point is overall cost management. You need to have a good operating model within your company, whatever you decide to do. But now comes the trick. These five things, keep them in mind, you see them again. And we are often talking about print service providers. I like the word print service providers, but you need to be clear that printing and service providing is not the same. So you need to decide if you want to do both, and you can, or you want to be a printer, or you want to be a service provider. And it's up to you. But if you decide to be a printer, you need to be really good at print operation, logistic, cost management. If you want to really do service provider, you need to be very good in working with your clients, engaging with them, and managing all the big data, the workflow, complexity. Logistic, both of you need to be good. Cost management is less important here because typically the margins are much higher. So that's the things that you, you need to have in mind. And then you will understand why I, I say that. So printers need to print very effectively and th there will be further industry consolidation over here driven by online printing. And service providing is where you have growth because you need to give good advices to the brands and you need to work with them understanding what they want to achieve when they do a specific campaign. So now I'm sharing with you ideas on what you should be doing based on the feedback I received from customers over the last 10 years. I had a lot of clients, not a lot, but I had clients, they bought a very big press from HP, a big one, and they call it the Beast. And they called me and said, Francois, now I need to feed the Beast. Can you help me? Okay, I don't say no, but I don't say yes either, because hey, if you bought a press that is much bigger than what you need, it's not my problem, huh? you should have taken a smaller one. And now I'm telling them, I can help you to tame the beast. Not to feed the beast, but you need to be taming the beast. And you need to create printing platforms. And this is really important. You need to mutualize your printer equipment with colleagues. You need to, to build through IT competencies, I will come to that, and you need to operate 24-7. So what does it mean? You need to, if you have printers, that are doing more or less the same as you, you should, you don't need to own your, your equipment. You can have the equipment shared between two or three printers. You are all in the same area. If you are 
looking at presses, they are all becoming much more productive, much faster. And if you are only using your press eight hours a day or six hours a day, it's not a good investment. Same for finishing equipment. If you have some kind of Scodex, Icon type of finishing, Horizon, whatever, uh, Unkeler and so on, these, these machines are very productive. Some of them are costly. And if you're not using them at least 20 hours a day, it's a waste. So you need to mutualize hardware equipment between printers, and that will generate uh, good savings. And then in terms of IT knowledge, IT is becoming very critical, specifically with the rise of digital printing. If I see an advertisement in newspaper or on the web, Smith Printing is hiring an IT specialist. Do you believe that IT guys, 30 years old, will apply to such a job? No way, because the word printing, it's not attractive. My goodness, I will work in a printing company, I will be the only one understanding IT, I will be surrounded by guys uh, moving paper, changing plates, mixing ink. It's not a good job. So you will maybe get someone, but it will not be a good one. So if you are combining forces with neighborhood printers, then you can attract people in a better way because you will not be one guy lost in a printer company. You could be one IT guy with three or four colleagues doing the same. So in a graphic way, what I am recommending is to have printing finishing platforms, IT, security, data management, everything, that can be shared. And that's the, what I call the printing part. And then here on the right, this is more the service providing type of capabilities. Web to print, sales organization in a consultative way, supply chain management together with the clients. And then the suppliers, the Indigo, the KBA, the Heidelberg, they are here on the left. They provide equipment here, and that's a platform that different printers can be using. And these things here, this is where you are going to generate a lot of, uh, of profits. And what is required? Web to print automated services. This is growing, but web to print, there are two types of web to print. You have the, the web to print from very big companies like Pixar, they are over there in the, in the, in the hall. Pixar from, from Italy, but they are a global player all over, all over Europe. Web to print, you will need it yourself if you are a small printer for your local clients when they want to place additional orders. They want to reorder something or they don't want to call you. They want simply to send you a, a mail. Can you 